I'd like to introduce Ina Shevchenko. Uh, some of you may know Ina. Ina is leader of feminine topless activists who fights against patriarchy in different forms. She's been arrested, imprisoned by the Belarus KGB, am I right? Um, or security services. Um, she sought asylum in France. She's written a book on the anatomy of oppression. And um, right of woman to be free from all forms of patriarchy. Um, Ina is quite well known in defending the rights of women, particularly when it comes to oppression of women and the body. I'd like to welcome, give uh, uh, Ina a warm uh, round of applause, and um, <laughs> here we go. Thank you, thank you, and one more time, thank you. Thank you for being here at the Conference for Freedom of Thought and Expression, for gathering in this room, celebrating apostasy and blasphemy in the time when in 39 countries of the world you can be punished with prison sentence or even death penalty for that. In the time and place where everyone, religious and not, regardless of nationality and origin, becomes a walking target of um, extremists moved by dogmas. In the time when, for many, it is easier to kill than to accept differences. Thank you for gathering here and defending humanism in the time when far-right nationalists capitalizing on fear and terrorist threat spread more hate and discrimination against minorities, and especially Muslims. Thank you for trying to keep the doors open and minds open in the time when uh, xenophobes aim for shutting more doors and building more walls between us. In the time when those who are supposed to be our allies turn their backs as regressive left do today and leave criticism of religious extremism to xenophobes. In the time when also to my personal deep sadness and regret and revolt some women endorse the system um, of values created against them with so-called religious feminism. I thank you for not giving up the reason and speaking out for humanism. Because the ultimate tragedy for society is no, not when a small group of bad people commit violence and persecution, but the ultimate tragedy is when millions of good people keep silence about it. In the time when uh, tools of religious oppression and violence are defended in the name of culture, in the name of tradition, and I believe with a special cynicism in the name of liberty and progress. In the time when progressive societies give up in front of religious lobbies and sacrifice human rights, and too often those are women's rights, they sacrifice them on the altar of political and religious correctness, I thank you for being a strong opposition to them. In, the time, in this time, I thank you for letting me join you to celebrate freedom of conscience. And I must say, after yesterday, um, I have great feeling that it will be the greatest pleasure to burn with all of you in hell. So I'm here to celebrate women's rights, women's creativity, strengths, women's solidarity, and to denounce the greatest obstacle for feminism, which is organized religions. Let's go over the world as suffragette Elizabeth Cady Stanton advised us, and we will find that every form of religion which has breathed upon the earth has degraded women, she said. I observe this tragic panorama every day. Every day words pronounced in Vatican, in Mecca, in Jerusalem, in churches, mosques, and synagogues across the world emphasize on women's inferiority. Every day, a new he headline informs us about threats and violence that women face either because they wore a skirt in Saudi Arabia, took off hijab in Iran, did abortion in Poland, went to school in Pakistan, asked for divorce in Israel because they changed their beliefs or simply because they fell in love with someone. Patriarchal culture has developed many instruments of mass destruction of women. But I argue that religions, organized religions, are the most successful patriarchal tool ever developed against women. Religions stage a merciless war on women's body, imposing over it patriarchal rules, wishes, their definition of who we are. 
their definition of what our mission is, what our potential is, what we can say, what we should read, who we're allowed to love and how we're supposed to dress. As the first woman of letters, Christine de Pizan wrote in 14th century in her uh, book of the City of Ladies, she was a very strong believer and she wondered why God she strongly believed in, why did he put her in this woman's body as this body is so bad and dirty? Now, despite the wish of my parents, I did not become a doctor, which is quite obvious, I guess. Nevertheless, recently I profoundly studied anatomy and did some kind of medical work. Together with my comrade and friend and young writer, Pauline Ilier, I send greetings to Pauline, um, we published a book in France um, that study, which studies the anatomy of oppression um, of three monotheist religions uh, of women's body, by three monotheist religions of women's body. In our Anatomie de l'oppression, we show how religions oppress women through their body by penetrating each part of it, each organ with their rules, their morals, their perceptions, their definitions, and their demands. So I propose to go quickly and make uh, together go through woman's body, make this sort of a medical scan of a woman's body. They control where our feet steps in by segregating us in schools, in the places of worship, by creating no-go zones for women like mountain Athos, which, which is a Christian, um, Orthodox Christian mountain, or numerous mosques and uh, temples. They, even in some countries, in some religious states, attempt to take away from women their right for freedom of movement. Religion staged a war on our vaginas for centuries. With the cult of virginity and motherhood, they deny women sexuality. They even um, dare to phonetically, barbarically cut off uh, women's clitorises, crippling 200 million girls and women alive today. They want to control our abdomen as well, as only in 58 countries of the world, abortion is performed by request. Let's continue scanning the body and stop on the breast. This woman's, part, um, this woman's body part that is subject of both hypersexualization and modesty by patriarchal institutions. Religious institutions with their modesty codes, dress codes, emphasize on covering woman's chest as this part of woman's body should be shamefully hidden and be remembered only for the needs of breastfeeding new generations. As you might know, with my fellow activists from Femen, we've transformed our breasts into our political poster, into our political message. This political poster with different slogans that speak with our voice today. We say that our bodies can be sexual when we decide, but they will be also political when we decide. We breastfeed, but now we breastfeed our own women's revolution. Now, <laughs> now I want to bring your attention to the next organ of woman's body, our heart. Let's look at it in a metaphorical way and find out that religions, religious institutions ignore, deny women's feelings. They try to deprive us from the right to choose with our heart. As today we count 26 millions of arranged marriages across the world. Women in Judaism and in, in, and in Islam struggle for their rights for divorce. And numbers of women experience violence and die um, as a result of punishment for adultery and honor, honor killings. Religions are also the most often enemies of LGBT rights. Now look at my hands. Um, many religious traditions prohibit men to shake those women's hands because they want to demonstrate that we cannot count on peace and friendship between men and women as we are not equal according to their dogmas. These hands were deprived from accessing the instruments of power and wealth for centuries as well. And finally, our heads. The temples of our personalities, our emotions, our dreams, our thoughts, ideas, and our revolt. Those heads are under constant and heavy attack from religious institutions. Their fetishism over women's hair results in laws of compulsory hijab that forces women to cover up regardless of their choice and regardless of their religious affiliation in many countries. Religions target also our education system. 
They target our schools. They target our schools because they know that knowledge makes us truly unfit to be slaves. Religious fanatics want to prevent girls from entering the schools by staging a real war against them, spreading bloodshed like Taliban and Boko Haram. Organized religions are the mafias. I believe they are the businesses of destroying women and, and their dreams. And finally, our minds and our mouths. Our freedom of thought and expression is under constant attack. Whereas some, including some of you in this room, may disagree with some of my stance or would prefer uh, that I would keep my shirt on, we all agree that religions are the obstacle for freedom of conscience and expression across the globe. Freedom of speech is the defining element of our human nature, the core of human rights. It is the base of freedom. When we suppress or neglect freedom of speech, we diminish freedom, we question human rights, and finally, we deny our own human nature. Myself, as an activist who has been arrested in some countries, kidnapped and tortured in Belarus, beaten up and forced to leave, uh, to run away in exile from Ukraine for expressing my political opinion, as it happened to be an unpopular opinion in those countries, also, after surviving, together with some present in this room, after surviving a terrorist attack that happened in February in 2015 in Copenhagen during my speech on freedom of expression, by the way, I define freedom of expression as the most fundamental of all fundamental human rights. Of course, John Milton phrased it better in his Aeropagetica, give me the liberty to know, he, he wrote, to utter and to, to argue freely according to conscious above all liberties. So I define freedom of expression as the most fundamental of all rights for the reason that freedom of expression is a guarantee for many other fundamental human rights. Free speech is an essential liberty without which it's very difficult to demand um, other human rights, to imagine them or to put them in practice. But speech that challenges religious ideas is often not accepted as free speech, under pretext, well-known pretext of being offensive to some. I'm convinced that blasphemy is the true celebration of free speech, as religions, as we said here many, already many times, religions are just ideas among many others ideas, even if we recognize their importance for believers. There is no right not to be offended, but there is a right, fundamental and unconditional right of free speech. Same as believers can be offended by blasphemous speech, homophobes can be offended by the speech recognizing um, rights of um, LGBT community. And sexists can be offended by ideas of feminism, right? I myself as a woman, as a feminist, feel offended every day by misogynist and sexist speech, by anti-feminist speech. But my offended feelings, though, will not and should not become a reason to restrict someone's speech. Because as another woman always worth quoting, Rosa Luxemburg said, freedom of speech is meaningless unless it means the freedom of the person who thinks differently. The notion of offended feelings of someone's speech by someone's speech is not only egoistic, but also dangerous as it creates limits for inherently unlimited right for free speech. If you believe in free speech without offense, you don't believe in free speech. Freedom of speech also guarantees existence of our diverse personalities, which is necessary for constant evolution of the society as a whole. Religions portray silent women as role model. They don't want our diverse personalities to be manifested. While speaking out loud, men is considered to be bold, brave, and strong. Speaking out, women will be ashamed and humiliated for being hysterical and embarrassing. So here I am, one of those shameful and hysterical and embarrassing women. <laughs> they portray us like this as for actions staged with other activists for written text and for pronounced words. We have been called hysterical by some and aggressive by others. But they don't feel attacked because they see our breasts. They neither feel attacked because we go out in the street with flower crowns in, on our heads. They feel attacked because we speak out loud and because we make each part of our body speak now. They, each part of my body speaks me, with my voice now, not with their voice. It's my ideas, not their ideas over this body. 
as the silence is expected uh, from women, we go out in the main squares across the world, we storm into the places of male power, we break into their stages and, on, uh, and their altars, and we speak out. We, we want to make women's voices heard, our own voices heard. As I came here, ladies and gentlemen, to remind the contribution of organized religions to female oppression and to denounce them as the major obstacle for feminism, the feminism which aims for unconditional liber uh, equality between men and women. I believe, I claim that religions and feminism are incompatible. Where organized religions take space, women's rights lose it. Where religious influence begins, feminism ends. That is not to say that faith and spirituality are incompatible with women's freedom and feminism. One can be a believer and feminist, we know that for sure, whereas feminism cannot be religious. You cannot demand women's liberty and rights by looking at them through sexist, misogynist, religious dogmas and accepting, and accepting the rules of religious institutions. When feminism demands women's rights over her body, religious texts and institutions claim men's ownership over women's body. Feminism fights for women to be heard. Religions want us to stay silent and obedient. Feminism expresses, ex exposes women's strengths and force. Religious institutions emphasize on our modesty and passiveness. Patriarchal religions have no place in feminism, and therefore, Religious feminism betrays global fight for women's rights. By adopting the language of women's rights to oppressive religious rules imposed on women, you not only manifest intellectual dishonesty, you endanger millions of women who refuse those rules in their everyday life. Now strongly believing and always fiercely defending the right for free choice for everyone, I do believe that everyone has a free choice to choose conservative ideas and apply them in their own life, to choose even sexist and misogynist traditions, patriarchal clothes. But I demand, don't disguise them into symbols of progress. Don't disguise them into symbols of, of feminism. Don't be hypocrites. I often hear the voices of those Muslim feminists, and as it happened to be, they are often from this, countries, from this country, unfortunately. They call to ignore my voice, my words, because I am, as they say, white privileged feminist or even neo-colonialist. So I'll use an opportunity to answer for once. If coming from a country of third world level of poverty, growing up in a society with one of the highest levels of sexu sexual exploitation of women in the world, if being forced to live in exile if living under death threats is considered to be a privilege, you're mistaken. But most, more importantly, <laughs> but more importantly, listen to this. I don't believe that to speak for fundamental women's rights and universal freedom for all, you need to have a certain skin of color or come from a certain culture. To be a woman is enough for that. Religions have no place in feminism. Nevertheless, when feminism fights for its place within religious communities to reform the dogma, the, the society gets its great chance for its cure. I therefore want to also salute the work of great and numerous men and women who work in their religious communities across the world to reform and change discriminative religious views over women. They, they do it with honesty and reason about their religion and their institutions. Ladies, sisters, I hope to say comrades, my final word, word will be for you. Never stay quiet. Don't choose silence as a strategy, it's a bad strategy. Silence is a death penalty for our personalities and our dreams. Let's speak freely, express ourselves without asking for anyone's permission. By exercising our freedom of speech, we take the power to reject injustice of the past, to change the status quo, to discover our new potential, to create free, safe, and unjust future for all. It is time to answer on the fantasies of religious institutions by reality. Let's answer by, by reality. Let's tell them out loud that when we look in the mirror, we don't see submissive, inferior slaves. We see proud, 
capable and free women who stand for each other. We can wear long dress on Monday and shorts on Tuesday. We can laugh, speak out loud. I claim that we can successfully oppose global patriarchy by opposing their most successful instrument, organized religions. Not your faith, not your spirituality, but their dogma, their rules, their traditions created to hold power over us. Let's be, let's be rather rebels than slaves, I ask you. I'm not making a declaration of war here. On the contrary, I'm asking to end the, this bloody conflict between, men, uh, between women and religions. I call everyone free thinkers, secularists, atheists, believers, free and equal citizens of the world to end the global war on women. It is time to speak out about the crimes, organ by, uh, the, uh, the crimes by organized religions because I believe it's time to know, not only to believe. I invite everyone with all our differences to join this fight because if after all these years of activism, of campaigning, if after all these consequences, if I know anything at all, then it is that freedom is never given. It is always won. So at this conference, I heard many voices, many incredible, brave voices of brave women. And as I identify myself as a, God, as a girl against God, I committed this conference to create a new community of girls versus gods. And I invite you to join it in the soon future. You will hear from me. So, now that I will be leaving this stage and finishing this speech, I finish it with hope. I finish it, his, it with hope because I'm looking forward for a day when imams, rabbis, priests, all religious fanatics, sexist and mis misogynist, moved by monotheist dogmas, will go down on their knees, but not to pray for support of their gods. They will go down on their knees in front of women of the world to ask for their forgiveness. It's only then we can live in peace, and it's only then they can be proud of their gods. Thank you.